Hello, my name is Mark Pimentel. I'm a CAM application specialist here at Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can define a tool holder using a 3D model. We've seen in previous videos where you can use a 2D sketch to define both your insert and your tool holder. Here, we're gonna use a 3D model for the purposes of the virtual machine. Uh, generally, if you use a 3D model, you're looking to make sure that the overall tool shape doesn't collide with anything on the machine. Uh, for instance, what we have on screen here, this happens to have this clamp. I would wanna make sure that this doesn't collide with any features or any other fixturing on my machine in my virtual machine. So let's take a look at how we do that with this geometry. So this assembly file actually is two files, one holder and one insert. I downloaded those individual files from a tool supplier and then I combined it in this assembly. The reason being is because of the way SolidWorks assemblies works, is any changes I make to the individual parts in this assembly gets filtered into their individual part files. So that when I go to use those part files to define the insert and the holder, everything I do in the assembly is used there as well. So we're gonna see what I'm gonna to add to these individual part files, and then we'll see how they get used in the tool definition. We'll start with the insert. So when you define your inserts and your holders, you're referencing a origin. You're referencing the corner rad, the center of the corner rad of that insert. So I'm gonna use that as the reference point for both the holder and the insert. The reason being on that is because when I go to define these, I won't have to worry about offsets. I won't have to tell it where this the insert sits relative to the origin of the holder if they use the same origin. I'm starting from an assembly. I know that they're sitting correctly together now in this assembly. So if I leave all, all the reference points the same, this assembly, this relationship, this mating will carry over to the tool definition. So because we're inside the assembly, but I wanna make effects to the actual individual part file, I'll just do an edit part. And what I've done here is because we were looking for the corner rad center, I made a sketch. Just made a simple three point circle to, to find the center of that corner rad. I made two lines so that I can make a coordinate system. And that coordinate system is what we're gonna to use to define the orientation and the placement of this insert. If you take a look at the X and the Z positive, I made them in such a way so that they represent a right-handed tool cutting radially. So that is enough to define or add enough geometry to define that tool insert. For the holder, same sort of thing. I'm just gonna go and edit the part file. Again, because we're in assembly, I still have a representation of the insert on screen, which gives me the ability to sketch that corner rad center. And then because I have that there, again, I can add a coordinate system for right hand milling, right hand turning. So now they'll be referencing the same coordinate system. Another thing to note is that I've given those coordinate systems names so that when I go to actually define these, I know what to reference when I pull up that part file. If I were to leave it as the default, you'll see that because this came from probably another software, this came from someone else's design, I, don't, I didn't control the orientation. So if you take a look at the SolidWorks coordinate system here, this thing is not oriented as how I'd want it to be on the machine. So an additional benefit of creating my own coordinate system is I can tell it that I specifically want this to be mounted in the X and the Z plane as I see fit, not necessarily how the, as the original tooling supplier had this part modeled. So with those two definitions in place, those two individual solids are saved somewhere with their own coordinate systems. Now I can define my insert and my holder. I'll just go up to my tech DB, go to my turn tooling, and we'll start with the insert. So the insert is a user defined insert. And I've already defined it here as my tool ID five. You can see that I measured from my 3D model the thickness. I'm not putting any relief angle on there because it's already mounted the way I want it to be mounted. And I'll just give it tool material and coolant type, and then just generic names. You can see that I've given it just a generic name. And on the bottom here, the coordinate system that I like it to reference for both orientation and for placement, the origin of that, that coordinate system and the orientations of the X and the Z planes. Those will be taken from whatever model I choose here under user defined path. So I just click browse and I can browse for my solid. Now by default, it's gonna look for turn insert. This is a similar tool insert definition that you would have seen in the other videos where you use a sketch and then just an extrusion. Um, you can use that here as well. So if you are defining an insert from 
uh, any other shape, then you can use the tool insert. This is the internal format the cam works. I'm going to use the part definition. So this will be looking for a SOLIDWORKS part file. As we saw a second ago, that's my part file with all the details. And it has a corner system I can use for the orientation. The assembly allows me to choose an, a SOLIDWORKS assembly to define the insert. Now that's not really necessary here, but this same interface is used for the tool holder. In the case of a tool holder, I might actually have a collection of solids that represent the holder. If I did download an assembly, not a dumb assembly like I had for my part, but another assembly that had the clamp, the spacer, the set screw, uh, I might want all those to be represented as well in the assembly. I can bring that in here using the assembly option. But in my case, I just have a single part file to represent this insert. I would just click OK, and you can see here that it would just load that up. To define the holder, we'll go back to Turn Tooling. And now in this case, we'll go to Holders. Again, I'll just scroll down to my previously defined tool holder. That is my tool ID of 82. Again, I gave it a dumb name. Holder shape, insert type. These are all definitions here so that you can load only certain types of inserts with this holder. Um, everything else on here, again, is just dumb names and the referencing of the coordinate system that I find. So this, again, will orient the holder the way I want it to be held. It'll uh, place it referencing that origin of that coordinate system. So again, I'm taking control of where this thing is going to sit in space. On your user-defined path, same sort of thing. I would browse and I would choose either the tool holder definition. Now this would be an STL. If you work with STLs, I would advise to just make sure that the coordinate system of that STL is what you're looking for as well, because STLs can shift. They can be dimensionally different between metric and inch. So using STLs is a little bit of a bother, but you can definitely pull it off inside of CamWorks. But the purpose of this video is to use the part file. So there you go. I can grab the part file and it also has the coordinate system I created. Or of course, we can always click on assembly. Now, an insert and a holder are not what you choose when you are working with your lathe or your Milton parts. You're actually choosing the combination of the two in an assembly. So we have to create that now. We have these two different part files. So go back to Turn Tooling, and now we'll go to Assembly Tools, and I'll just find my assembly of ID 209, where I've combined insert number five, holder number 82, with no offsets, because in the assembly that I used to build these, they're already placed where I want them to be placed. If I define the holder independently of the insert, and I needed to define where that insert sits on that holder, then I would use these in, these these offsets. Because I defined everything together, I know these two are going to fit together. I, I can just leave those at zero. Now with that both defined, let's take a look at that tool in use. So I actually just have a very basic turn part uh, file here. I'm just going to do a, a finishing with this tool that we just finished defining. Let me just open up the operation. If we go to tool crib, we can see that we have my assembly tool nine. The holder sitting in a tool block and you can see the inserts there as well fully represented by the 3D model. The only thing that's a little different here is whether you define the insert using the insert uh, definition or the part definition, they still come in as that kind of prismatic look to them. And the reason being is because uh, it's not representing the rake angle, but it is just giving us the projection of that solid on the tooling plane. So if we take a look at that, the face of that insert is in line with the cutting face with the XZ plane. So you're still getting the proper placement. You found that corner rad, you found that tool tip, based off of all the dimensions in the assembly, um, but here it's not represented with a rake angle. So that's the only thing to be aware of. But everything else on here is from that 3D model that you can see on here. Uh, additionally, in the same tool tab, we do have options to control which tool block is used there. There is a way to customize the tool block that will be covered in a separate video. Let's take a look at that in our virtual machine. So we'll go to machine sim. Let me just create the G code very quickly. We'll post the code. And with our virtual machine open, you can see that my tool block is sitting on my turret. 
and I have a representation of the tool that I defined. And again, it doesn't have the fine detail of my 3D model, it doesn't have the rake angle, but it is in line and it'll properly machine my part. So this is a great way to not only get something you can do collision detection against, but because of the way that this was all defined, it is now placed on my virtual machine as it would be in real life as well. So I don't have to do any kind of offsets. By working with these 3D models, I'm placing everything on the machine as I would want them to actually be placed, actually be spaced. If you have any questions on this or anything else relating to uh, Camworks, give us a call on the main tech line and stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. If you like these videos, like and subscribe as well. Thanks for watching.